Greenspan, director of the Ghanami Early Childhood Program here at the Harry and Rose Sampson Family JCC, and I'm here to share my moment of Torah. This week's Torah portion, Bayi Sheib, is full of lessons. Lessons regarding perception, confronting difficulties, interpretation of dreams, and reflection. For a parent to be fair and give each child equal treatment has never been an easy task. And being a new parent, can be that much more challenging. I remember being a new parent involved in our first playgroup in Skokie, Illinois. As though being a new parent wasn't enough, I was new to the community and trying to make friends of my own. Sitting in the circle waiting for the group to begin, I overheard a conversation between two moms. As the one directly to my right began to speak, she shared an encounter, one which made it difficult for her to see all of her children in the same light. She had just given birth to her third child, a beautiful baby boy. The family was celebrating the Shalom Zahor, a traditional gathering or celebration held the Friday night before the baby's bris. During the celebration, a wise old Sephardic man unexpectedly appeared. He quieted the room and announced that the newborn boy would grow up to be a great Torah scholar. Then, as abruptly as he appeared, the old Kabbalist left leaving the room in a state of bewilderment. Strangely, years have passed, and I'm still in contact with this person. And since that occurrence, the child has grown, showing signs of genius. My friend says, and is convinced, that the old rabbi's words clearly had their effect. And she wonders whether the child, more than any of her other children, is bound for a life of exceptional greatness. This story is similar to the one in this week's Torah portion. The Midrash says that from the moments of Joseph's birth, it was clear to his father Jacob that Joseph was very special. Joseph, being one of 12 sons, possessed a great deal of chen, spiritual charm, and the two spent much time together, bonding and creating a special relationship. Later in his teenage years, at the age of 17, Joseph had a dream in which the sun, the moon, and the stars are all bowing down to him. He shares this dream with his family. He and the rest of his family quickly surmise that the sun, the moon, and the stars are actually his mother, his father, and his brothers, and all of them are bowing down to him. But why? Could it be all of the special attention and extra time that Joseph spent with Jacob that made him feel entitled? Might Joseph feel that he was entitled to ultimately take over the family when Jacob was gone? While Jacob publicly scolds Joseph for having such a dream, the Bible says Jacob guarded the matter. One of the commentaries explains this to mean that in his innermost heart, Jacob actually thought the dream would come true. The assumption is that dreams were possibly interpreted this way because Joseph was favored like the firstborn son. And of course, it's in Vayeshev, the Bible tells of Jacob giving Joseph a small multicolored armband or coat. This was just one more expression, possibly of favoritism, just one more example, and there were undoubtedly other factors which caused the rest of the brothers to feel that Jacob loved Joseph more. While one may understand Jacob's dilemma, even may be able to relate to his relationships with all of his children, the reality is that Judaism demands that we treat all of our children equally. The Torah teaches us that while everyone has their own unique role to play in this world, Greatness is not determined by what gifts and talents we have, but rather by what we do with those gifts. It is said in God's eyes, the average person who applies his limited skills to the ultimate is greater than the success who has coasted with his God-given skills. Having such an outlook, there is no place of showing favoritism to one child or another, just because she may have more natural or characteristic talent than the other. Balance your relationship with your children. Not that you need to treat each child identically, but be sure to consider their sensitivities and their uniqueness. It's a lesson every parent should learn. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.